Good evening, everybody. If we could uh, stand in the house of the Lord tonight. Are you grateful to be here tonight? Amen. Why don't we just clap our hands unto the Lord? Come on, if you're thankful He's got you here safely tonight, why don't you clap your hands? If you're able to stand up, why don't you clap your hands? If you're able to breathe, why don't you clap your hands? There's nothing you cannot thank Him for, Brother Shannon. Ah, the other day I was at work, and uh, I was walking around and doing a, piddling with a couple things, and I just started to thank Him. You know what, Lord, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm able to walk. I'm thankful, Lord, that um, every organ in my body is working properly. I just began to find every little thing that I could thank Him for. And it's just like the peace of God, Brother Tripp, at work, just right there, began to just flow into me. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. I, I'm grateful that Pastor's back, amen. I, I, I'm excited to have him here. I can't wait for what he has for us tonight. Hallelujah. And, I'm rejoicing in what the Lord's doing. I'm rejoicing that there's people hungry for the Word of God. I'm rejoicing that there's people hungry for the things of God. Your co-workers are hungry. They want to know what Jesus has done for you. Your neighbors want to know what Jesus has done for you. The people at the gym, the people in the grocery stores. Brother Terrence, as I was reading throughout this week, it just dawned on me how many times over and over and over I read it. But crowds were always around Jesus. Don't let the world fool you. People are hungry for Jesus. People are hungry for this truth. For Acts 2.38, for repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus. And receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Evidence by speaking in other tongues. There's nothing like it. There's nothing better. And I'm grateful to be here tonight. We're going to go into prayer tonight. And I've made up my mind, Brother Brent. I'm not leaving this place the same. Whatever that looks like, I'm going to respond tonight. I, I was praying today and it, the Lord just began to deal with me. The man with the withered hand, Jesus said to stretch forth your hand. He had to respond to what Jesus said. I'm going to respond to the praise team today. When the Holy Ghost begins to move, I'm going to praise. If I got to dance, I'm going to dance. If I got to shout, I'm going to shout. I, I'm not, and I'm going to pray when we're supposed to pray. When pastor preaches, I'm going to take notes. I'm going to do the best that I can to leave this place changed, to leave this place different. And it's not because of me, but it's because of Jesus. If you believe you can leave this place different, why don't you just raise your hand tonight? Cast all your cares upon Him. Cast all your needs in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We come to you believing that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. God, we cast every care upon you, every doubt, every ounce of fear. Lord, we give it up to you tonight, Lord, that we may trust in you in all things. God, I, I pray that you direct our steps. You direct the steps of our family. God, and you assist us in our jobs. In every tough conversation, Lord, I pray that you give us the knowledge, the wisdom, the favor to be raised up in our jobs, to have the stature and the favor, and Lord, to to not for us, but to bless your kingdom for your kingdom's sake, Lord. God, I cover every family tonight. Lord, every attack, spiritual, physical, carnal, whatever it is, I plead the blood of Jesus over that tonight in the name of Jesus. And I come against every devil in hell that may be trying to get anybody to quit tonight. I lift them up. I pray that faith would rise up in this place, God. I pray that a freedom to respond, a freedom to praise, a freedom to worship come, Lord. We pray these things, God, and Lord, anoint our pastor, God. I pray that you speak to him divinely, Lord. Whatever, whatever it may be, whatever the word that needs to go forth, let it be received on good ground, Lord. And we want to respond. We want to be changed. We're hungry for you, Jesus. We crave you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh 
Let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. Let your fire fall, cast out all my fears. Let your fire fall, your love is all I feel. Ooh, let your a truth that supersedes all lies, that supersedes all fears, Brother Tripp, and that's Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hmm. Nothing better than Jesus, Brother Ben. That simple. He is the way. Following Him is the way. It is the life. It's the way to life eternal. It's, it's the way to live in a life and victory that, that is overcoming. Of all those lies, Brother Cody, of all the lies that say we're not good enough, of all the fear that says uh, we can't do it, any, any of all that, any of it. But uh, if we can get our ways to give on the board tonight, we have Givelify, PayPal, available at riverbendpentecostals.com. Cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals P.O. Box 477. New Madra, Missouri, 63869. Um, we have pans up here for tithing and offering. And you can text to give at 
883-9311. I'm going to give out a faith tonight, Brother Shannon. Um, if you worry about money, I, I encourage you to give more. I encourage you to, to step out on faith. He can take care of you. Amen. Let's say this with faith tonight, amen? Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen.
on, if he's changed your life, why don't you just clap your hands tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The master's in the room tonight. My God changes lives. It's more than it's more than belief. It's more than just mental ascent. My God changes lives. My God changes families. Brother Terrence, my God changes generations because the Bible says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Hallelujah. Come on, if he's changed your life, why don't you just clap your hands? If he's still changing your life, why don't you clap your hands? Hallelujah. If you would like to be seated in the house of the Lord. Riverbend children could come forward tonight. We love our children, amen? We're going to pray over them tonight. We're going to pray over their class tonight. We're going to pray over their teachers. And we're going to pray that they get a hold of something that will last a lifetime. I believe it can happen tonight. I hear stories all the time about people remembering something from children's church, from little kids. And they hold on to it. So why don't you just stretch your hands out forward in faith and let's cover them tonight in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, we cover these children and we cover that classroom back there. I believe, Lord, that you can do miracles, signs, and wonders back there. I believe that tonight is the night that minds are going to be healed, that minds are going to be open, that revelation is going to happen. It's going to happen about the name of Jesus and, 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 the, and baptism and, and receiving the Holy Ghost. I'm believing tonight is the night. Lord, I, I cover their teachers tonight. I pray that they can connect. I pray that they can flow in the Holy Ghost and get on their level, Lord, and that there will be ministering and revelation. We cover them. We cover their homes. Lord, from when they leave this place, I pray that your hand is upon them and you use them now. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brother Hunter, if you want to lead them all back. Don't wait. Wait. I uh, hop up there on the stage, Angel Alejandro. You come over with the microphone. Where's his mama? She step out. She's going to miss out. Look here, I got a phone call from the librarian at Angel School today. Can you remember what you said at school? They were talking about kindness. And the children were saying, if you do something for your mama, if you do something for your daddy or your grandma, I want you to tell them what you said. So at the end of the um, book, I said, it's another way you can um, show kindness. You have God in your life, get God to your friend in your life. Aww. Ain't that the sweetest thing ever? She said he's planting a seed in the library. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. That's, that's amen. just so amazing. I wanted to share that with you. Amen. Amen. When you, get a, when you get a FaceTime from the teacher, it ain't usually a good thing. <laughs> Lead them right. on back, buddy. Lord can use them now, amen? amen. Hallelujah. River Bend ignited, if y'all would like to come on forward. And uh, Brother Richard asked me tonight, those who are graduating, if, if y'all would please go on back there tonight as well. Brother Richard would like to have y'all back there. We're going to cover them in prayer tonight as well. We're going to cover their class. We're going to cover their futures because they have a bright future. I believe it. I believe the Lord's going to use them. I believe the Lord's going to do great things through them. And we're going to speak it in faith tonight. We're going to pray it in faith tonight. Amen. Let's do it. 
Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cover this group right now. Lord, I pray that t tonight there would be revelation. I, I pray for direction to come to them tonight. I pray for divine direction in their decisions of where they go, of what they do, and what you have for their life. I pray that you are involved in every bit of it, God. I, I pray that you help Brother Richard connect with them tonight. I pray that you help him to minister tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and I cover their minds and whatever lies the enemy may bring against against them any ounce of confusion. Lord, I pray that they find truth in your word. I pray that they find truth in a prayer room. I cover them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to lead them on back, Sister Chrislin. Thank you, thank you. If you're excited for the word of the Lord tonight, why don't you just clap your hands. Hallelujah. The Lord's in this place, and I know He's about to move, and I... I'm just thankful for my pastor. I'm thankful for what he has for us tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Blake. And uh, um, I, uh, I appreciate while I was on my sabbatical, uh, Brother Jerry uh, told me last sun Sunday before last, he was glad I was here. He told everybody we was having a guest speaker, <laughs> me. I may need that microphone. It's hotter than mine. Is mine? Oh, no. That's all right. I'm good. I'm good, but thank you. Um, tonight, I'm supposed to be picking up. How many of you brought your handouts back? Oh, ha, ha. Well, yeah, Josh said all of y'all that became the teacher's pet while he's been uh, running around the edge, look out. He's coming back. Uh, well, we're not going to go there tonight. I'm thankful for you bringing it back, and we will finish it next week. But due to the graduation uh, ceremony part, uh, party acknowledgement that we're going to have back there, and I please ask that you all come, all of you come over there. There's enough room for everybody. But uh, we want to. We have five graduates that come to church here and we want to support them. Somebody supported you. And they still are. So, but um, I felt like the Lord downloaded something into my mind today and uh, I uh, um, I got to tell you first we got a, a rebellious faction has rose up in the church. They've been texting one another and talking about me that I preach too long. <laughs> Sister Tina put the ringleader in her place a while ago. And I want to say how happy I am for that. That ringleader is your daughter, by the way, the Stanley daughter. Yeah, Meredith Edwards. And uh, I told Brother Blake that Katie can't be friends with Meredith no more. <laughs> because now Katie's done got on the bandwagon. And Sophia tried to use Lottie against me. Now, y'all got a problem. Meredith is a ringleader of the bad ones, but she's also a tattletale. So she, she coerces y'all to do bad things and then tells on you. So I'm just giving you a fair warning. If she don't have no friends no more... Praise God. <laughs> no, we're grateful for everybody here tonight. I'm happy to be here. I, uh, uh, I tell you, last week we prayed about it Monday night, but I was very, very blessed to be in a church where there were 16 people besides my wife and me. We made 18. They had a guitar, and he had a headset mic on, and one little girl praise sang, and that was their music. But the God was there. The power of God was there. And it made me very much more appreciative and thankful of the blessings that we enjoy. Amen. And uh, also be prayerful for that church, Willard, Missouri. I believe God's going to send revival to them. So since this is a Bible study, I've, <clears throat> I've done this before two other times, uh, as a matter of fact. But this is... 
uh, the, I've titled it an interjection. That's because it's a Bible study out of sequence. Just something I'm interjecting in here. An interjection of understanding. Um, we'll see where the Lord takes us and what the Lord does. Uh, I hope you're ready. Brother Christian, you got to hold a lot of weight over there since you're the only one in the line now. But uh, if you still plan on saying amen, first first step to falling out is being late for church. Oh, Lord. No. Jesus has rose from the dead. I'm in Luke 24. I'm going to cover about three scriptures here. Jesus has rose from the dead, and now he shows himself to his disciples. Now, I want you to keep in mind that Jesus has spent the better part of three and one half years with these guys, pouring into them miracle signs and wonders, uh, blessings. They've seen the dead raised. They've seen thousands fed. Uh, just you, you name it, the miracles that they experienced. He poured into them. Brother Jerry, he let them go to work. He let them do things. Sometimes they did good. Sometimes they struggled. But he turned them loose. But he begins to speak to them in Luke 24, and he spoke how the scriptures have been fulfilled concerning him. Everybody say concerning him. Concerning him. You don't want to miss out on this. Uh, about to be a... Anybody ever read John 15? I think you like John 15, don't you, Brother Brenton? Brother David's taught incredible message on it or a series on it. Um, about to be a purging. God is looking for people he can count on. And we're about to help you tonight become countable. He said, the scriptures concerning me are fulfilled, concerning Jesus Christ. Now, the next step is for you to understand the fulfillment of the scriptures concerning you. Luke 24 and 45 says, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. <coughs> Excuse me. What does it mean that he opened their understanding? Helps Word Study says this definition, to open fully. You can't make this stuff up, folks, what I'm about to tell you. Listen to this, Brother Shannon. Sister Maria, I think she's watching. Opened. Here's what it means. To open fully by completing the process necessary to do so. Now this is not accidental, nor at the risk of being scandalous, nor is this completely miraculous. But what has happened here, let me get comfortable. Thank you, Brother Blake. What has happened here, it, it looks like Jesus opens their understanding. He takes them to a place of fulfillment in their mind. And it looks like, Brother Christian, that maybe it's a miraculous undertaking, but it's not. Not completely. Okay? But what has happened, I hope somebody hears the word right now because I'm like stoked to be able to say this. What has happened is there has been a divine response to their desire. There has been a divine response, a response from heaven, from God himself in the flesh to their desire. How do we know where the disciples' desire is? Well, it's in their heart, they want to. How do we know that their desire is what's being met? They're still there. 
They failed, they stumbled, they fumbled, they wandered around, they didn't know what to do. After the initial abandonment of Jesus and after Peter's denial, they all came back together again and here they are. I wish somebody would realize how powerful of a statement that is. That I've been through the flood and I've been through the fire and I've been through the press and I've been through the struggle, but here I am. I'm still standing. I'm still here. I may be bruised a little. I may be battered a little. I may be struggling a little. And my reputation may have taken a hit. But I'm still here. And if I'm still here, I'm in a position where God can do something in my life. A divine response. I feel Jesus in the house. I was nervous for a minute, but it's gone. It's a divine response to their desire. And it's proven because they're still there. There is still an awareness. There is still an awareness of and a desire to hear those words of eternal life that only Jesus has. That kept them with him. The disciples stayed because of those words. Because of what he could speak into their life when most everybody else left during a call to greater consecration. Whatever you're looking for in your life, whatever you're lacking in your life, whatever you need in your life, you're only going to find it in Jesus Christ. So stop looking elsewhere. Stop hunting around elsewhere. Stop looking to other people for answers and look to Jesus. That's the only place you're going to find what you're looking for. He said he opened fully, open, made them completely understand by completing the process. I would argue with you today that while they've completed one process, another one is just getting started. The process that they have completed is they stuck with Jesus all the way till the day he takes off. They stayed. But when he left... But when he left, there they are to carry on what they've been called to do. You're not going to be happy until you're doing what God called you to do. You're not going to be happy. You're not going to be complete. You can run, you can go, you can buy, you can tell, you can yell, but you're not going to be happy until you're doing what God called you to do. The devil will tell you other things are going to make you happy. Dude's a liar. Say, I don't understand all this. I think Luke 24 and 45 is a good place to start when you don't understand. Amen? What does it say? Then opened he their understanding. Okay? Two different words for understanding here. This one. Understanding, he opened fully, completely opened their understanding. Oh, my Lord. That word, this first understanding, then opened he their understanding, would be better translated perhaps, he opened their mind. I want you to hear me right now. I felt this in the Holy Ghost a few days ago. The Lord confirmed it today. Look here. The God-given capacity of each person to think or to reason, the mind. Listen, the mental capacity to exercise reflective thinking. So you got a whole group of the disciples there. And Jesus fully opened them, fully opened their mind, their God-given capacity. Now, this setting that I want to share with you, and I, I'm going I'm to I'm get you back to the cupcakes and the punch quickly. All right? I am. But I want you to see this setting, Jesus and the disciples, as no different than when each of us sat in a classroom. Rarely, if ever, do, two, do any two people assimilate, retain, and apply information at the same level in a classroom. Very rarely. 
Sister Crystal teaches. Perhaps there's some others I can't think of you right now. But you teach kindergarten, right? Probably the best example of C-spot run. Everybody can't read C-spot run at the same pace, the same level, at the same time. Some of them hear somebody else say it, memorize it, and never learn how to read it, for example. All right? But children, nobody assimilates things. We got a problem I want to deal with right now. Stop measuring yourself by people around you. Stop measuring Stop measuring the success of God in your life by how much you know or don't know compared to the person sitting next to you. You're measured by the wrong measurement system. God has given you everything you need and he will open your understanding to comprehend everything you need to comprehend. But just because you can't tell people who the mark of the beast or who the Antichrist is and when the mark of the beast is coming doesn't mean you're a failure in the kingdom of God. Stop measuring yourself. I'm saying it not, not hypothetically, but emphatically. Stop measuring yourself by other people. Stop. Because when the Lord opens your understanding, he's going to give you all you can handle. But he's going to empower you to handle it. But he's not dealing with the same way with the other one. Or the other one. Or the other one. Because all of us are a part of the body of Christ. And we all have a specific function. And the eye and the hand don't do the same thing. I wish I had some more amens. Because we struggle with it. We struggle with it. I want every minister, every teacher to hear this. You've been called. You are anointed. Preach the gospel and teach the word as the Lord gave it to you. And if you're pursuing, I felt directed by the Holy Ghost right now. If you're pursuing your calling in Jesus Christ, you don't have time to be worrying about other people all the time. Some of us cannot do what God has called us to do because we're so wrapped up in worrying about other people. Stop. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He opened their mind. That is the God-given capacity of each person to think. God gave him all the understanding that they could handle. First, commensurate with their desire the understanding and the desire line up. And secondly, by their ability, their purpose, and their place of ministry. I said by their ability, by their purpose, and their place of ministry. The Lord is going to give you what you need to function in what he's got you doing right now. Everybody all right? Then he... Then opened he their minds, fully opened their minds that they might understand the scripture. Here we go. Properly, the definition of understand is to put together. So we're putting it together. What are we putting together? Look here. To join facts into a comprehensive or interlocking whole. Yes, sir. Well, sure. It's just part of it. Put together to take all the facts or ideas and put them into a comprehensive or interlocking whole. God is not the author of confusion. If there's chaos and confusion in your life, you're out of alignment with God. Period. Period. Okay, going further, here we are, Brother Brenton, going further, is to arrive at a summary or final understanding complete with life applications. So their understanding, he gave them everything they needed, 
to arrive at a final place, a final understanding, complete with life applications. And this is closely connected with discerning and doing the preferred will of God. I kind of wish Bruce could be here tonight, Brother Shannon. <laughs> now, when he says, I want you to be able to, un he opened up their understanding to the scriptures. Somebody want to tell me what scriptures it was he opened their understanding to? That testified of, of Jesus Christ, of the fulfillment of the Messiah. What scriptures was it? All of what ones? No, it couldn't have been all the scriptures. All they had at that time, which was Genesis to Malachi. They didn't have the New Testament yet. They are the New Testament. They're living the New Testament. Verse 46. And said unto them, thus, and that word thus means in this manner, what manner would that be? Fulfilling the scriptures. It is written, and in this manner it behooved or was necessary for Christ to suffer, that's Calvary, and to rise from the dead the third day. Give me 47. Logan, can you read that for me? Say, don't say it too fast. All right, stop. Back up a verse. I, I'm, not, I'm not playing games. Back up to 46. That's right. Next verse, real quick. Read. And, wait, wait a second. Don't worry about it. They laugh at everybody I have read for me. Don't worry about it, Logan. You're in good company. <laughs> Take me back a verse. I did that on purpose, Logan. You're good, brother. Take me. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem and is a conjunction that joins two thoughts together. The first thought is it was necessary for Jesus Christ to suffer and then rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. What do you think I'm trying to tell you right now? Oh, yeah, that, that's very good. We have a joining together of the fulfillment of the scriptures. Jesus, Jesus' part is done. But it ain't over yet. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. If we're not doing our part in spreading the gospel, Calvary was for nothing. Calvary is incomplete if you're not telling somebody about Jesus Christ. We're about to embark upon a revival journey that is going to be of great inconvenience to the people of God. He is not going to consult your calendar and he's not going to consult your schedule and he's not going to ask your preferences, but he has come in the power of the Holy Ghost tonight on an interjection of understanding to allow you to see how powerful and essential your mission is in the kingdom of God. This is not pulpit ministry. This is resurrection ministry in the world. We need to at any point in time be able to say who and where 
we are testifying and witnessing to somebody. Am I making sense? Is this making sense? And how important is it? How, how do we know how important it is? I'm wanting the right answer, and I'm not going to move till I get it. Back me up a verse. Here we go. You're right. And he said unto them, he opened their understanding to the scripture, fully opened their understanding to the scripture, completely opened their understanding to the scripture. And then this is what he said. For this manner, for this reason, it is written. And for this reason, or in this manner, it was necessary, behooved, was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. I would argue with you that 47 is as essential to the earth as 46. Say, well, I don't know this, and I don't know that, and I'm not qualified for this, and I'm not qualified for that. I am not sure how many different ways I can preach it. I'm going to ask you what we've been asking on Thursday nights in recovery. What are you doing? Forty-six and forty-seven go together. He opens the scriptures to them, opens their understanding, and says, I want you to know it was necessary for Christ to suffer and rise from the dead. But it's just as necessary that repentance, we're going to touch on something in a minute, repentance and remission of sins. What did that, that song say? Let me tell you about my Jesus song say about your past. Sister Kelly, do you remember what, what he says about your past in that song? I don't remember, but I just know what excited me. He make your past be erased. I'm interested. I'm happy to tell you that that's not just cool words in a song, but it's truth. I'm telling you that because of the blood of Jesus and the power of Calvary's cross, my past has been erased. My past is of no consequence in the spirit realm anymore. And if I'll just step out and do what God called me to do, then he can declare it was worth it. Brother David, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What is that joy? Verse 47. I want you to look at this seamless transition. From Jesus and his completed work to the disciples and the beginning of the work. It ain't stopped. It's not over but it began on the day of Pentecost. He said it was going to. I'm going to go there in just a minute, maybe. Jesus, if you understand this the way that I feel like we need to understand it, Jesus is speaking as if there, as if there is really no end of his work, but that the work or the mission of the disciples and you and I, for that matter, is also a fulfillment of Scripture as much as Calvary. The fulfillment of the purpose. All of a sudden, Brother Cody Pikey, this gives new meaning to when Jesus said, if any man will come after me, what's he got to do? Deny himself. Oh, what is my cross then? Jesus cross was a literal one. My cross is a figurative one. Why, why am I not witnessing? I, somebody sent me this the other day. Does anybody know who Penn Jillette is? 
Anybody know who Penn Jillette? Raise your hand if you know who Penn Jillette is. He's this great big old husky magician with long hair. He's an, he's an atheist. Yeah, that's it, Penn and Teller. Right. Somebody sent me a, a video. My cousin Vernon sent it to me. And he said, I got no problem with you believing in God. He said, but if you believed the message you preach and you don't tell it everywhere you go, that's why I don't believe in your God. That's why I don't have any respect for your God. It's because you believe this salvation message has eternal ramifications, but you ain't telling nobody. If we really believed it like the Bible teaches and we really preached it like the Bible preaches it, Kevin's got his hand up. You want to take the microphone back to him? Oh, I saw him, but if you don't call on him, he'd be wanting to fight. <laughs> Ain't that right, Kevin? No. Hold, hold that microphone for just a second. But there, there's some validity in him saying that. If you really believe what you're preaching and you're not telling anybody, do you really believe it? All right, Big Kev, let us hear it. All right, uh, what you're saying about uh, 47, about these scriptures, the reason why they're so important is because if the disciples did not follow Jesus' direction to teach it, then there wouldn't be no reason for him to do it. That's exactly right. No reason for Calvary if we're not doing what he called us to do. I, I told my wife, uh, I'm praying right now for a Bible study. For somebody to reach out, I, I want to teach Bible study. I'm looking for a hungry soul right now. I thought I had one set up, but it didn't work out. But I'm under conviction because it ain't good enough to just show up. But because you showed up, there's a chance God's going to let you understand something. Huh? Come on, stay with me now. Stay with me. That ain't nobody but Brother Shannon. I know he's good looking, but he ain't as good looking as he used to be. <laughs> that ain't no burn. That's, that's all of You should have seen them all. Stand up again, man. I want to show you. <laughs> are are y'all feeling what I'm saying? Say, well, I don't know what to do. Disciples didn't either. You understand, they're coming off of what was their greatest failure in their ministry. Every last cotton-picking one of them abandoned Jesus Christ. John hung around a little bit, but he didn't stand up for him either. Peter lied, denied, lied, cursed to prove he wasn't one of them. All of them ran and hid. He has to walk through doors to get into their presence because they're all hiding, locked up, and scared. We're not talking about the disciples coming off a 40-day fast and, you know, uh-uh. They're coming out of failure. When he said, you know what was happening when he said he opened their understanding to the scriptures? He was letting them, their understanding of who they were through him or who they would be through him come to their minds. Brother Ronnie. So 47, to me, looks like a directive from the boss of all bosses. Yep. You know, it's clear. Yep. It, it's plainly stated, and, and it's what we <coughs> need to do. And, and, you know, I feel like that should be enough for me. Yes. If, if, could we go back to 46 for a second? And we know that all good leaders are, have first have to be servants. Yes. And it, right there, it says, and thus... It behooved Christ to suffer. He had to do it. He had to go through the process. He, he, God became flesh and subjected himself to the process. And, and he's not asking us to do anything that he hasn't done twice over. For sure. Absolutely. That's why it's the, we taught in holiness. Anybody remember in holiness? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Y'all remember that? Perfect example, case in point. 
Now, I'm fixing to have to bring it home right here. But I want you to know something because a lot of this, I don't know if I'm supposed to say his name out loud, but a lot of this comes from what Bruce said that Thursday night because it messed with my head. Bruce was at recovery, and Bruce said, I'm not even sure who I am. Well, here's two things that hit me right between the eyes when he said that. I'm afraid a lot of us are in that same position, and we're not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be in that position. Say, well, I don't know what I do. I don't, I don't know what I do in the kingdom. Are you telling somebody about Jesus? Say, well, I don't. I don't really know how it works either because sometimes I get tongue-tied. Sometimes I say stupid things. Huh? But you know what, Brother Blake? I, he doesn't say make them this or make them that. He said go tell them. Go tell them. Yes, sir. You want to know something, Pastor? Tell me something. It burdened my heart because I got a buddy who I work with and uh, name don't matter right now, but he told me Last week, I said, what happened, man? Why'd you miss so much work? And he said, uh, I said, man, I ain't gonna lie, man. I was messed up, you know, and, and he drinks whatever. You know, he used to do dope, and now he drinks. But anyway, point is, though, he's a good dad. He takes care of his kid, you know what I mean? And he, he works. He works real hard, and I love the guy. And, you know, he, I talk to him all the time. And I said, what happened, man? He said, man, I went to my dad's gravesite, and 3 a.m. in the morning, I was out there getting drunk. And he said, then I didn't show up to work the next day. And I wanted to tell him about Jesus, but you know why I couldn't? Because I ain't living by the word. How is this man going to respect me to talk to him about my Lord and my Savior if I'm not acting like Christ, but I'm acting like the world? So the point is, I'm not beating myself up, but this was all ordained for a divine appointment to tell me and everyone else that we can't spread the message, we can't spread the gospel with people. Over. We can spread it all day. Hey, man, Act 238, this, that. But if I'm not living by it, if I have the gift of the Holy Ghost and evidence of speaking in other tongues, why can't I tame my tongue? Huh? Uh -huh. Well, you know what I'm saying? Well, let, let me just take this to you. Here's, here's what you just preached this message. If you know what I'm preaching, you can't go get high no more. You can't mess up no more. You want to know why I can't mess up? Because tomorrow... God is going to put me in somebody's path who's getting drunk in the cemetery at 3 o'clock in the morning, and i got to be able to help them. It is a motivation to line yourself up if you know somebody's counting on you. Does that make sense? If you know somebody's counting on you, and they are, you know how I know they are? Because the Lord made me for this. He created me for this. He filled me with the Holy Ghost for this. He didn't fill me with the Holy Ghost to come and juke and jive and bust a move in the church house. He filled me with the Holy Ghost to go out there and help somebody else who's on their way to a devil's hell, who has no hope, who doesn't know there's another way out. But Brent, the Lord will take your failure, buddy. He'll take your mistakes. And then you can say, I've been there before, and I've done it, but I found Jesus Christ, and he turned me around. He set my feet on solid ground. He lifted my head. He lifted my spirit. And if we're doing the work of the Lord, we don't have time to do the work of the flesh or the work of the enemy. The reason why we struggle so much is we've got too much cotton-picking time on our hands. We got phones on at our hand. We got every kind of device in the world to make everything faster, and we still don't have any time. That's a lie. You got plenty of time to get in trouble. You got plenty of time to struggle. You got plenty of time to sit around and twiddle your thumbs and grieve and moan and groan over everything that's gone wrong in the world. When the book says, when you see these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Ladies and gentlemen, he's getting the church ready. And I want to be part of a bride making herself ready. And the way I've got to do it is I've got to let somebody know about Jesus. What better way? He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Huh? Huh? You don't have to have it all together. I don't know if I'm going to get there because I'm already late. Looky here. 
We want to go over and we want to pray for our graduates and give them their gifts and eat cupcakes and stuff. You sure can. Uh huh. So I felt like I was having an actual meaningful conversation. And they would come in just to talk about that. And we, that's, that's what got me through my day. Uh -huh. I couldn't be here, you know, that, that's so, uh, when they got to be here, I watched it. Right. But talking about it in front of people, that lifts me up just as much as you. Sister do. Crystal, wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. You know what you did in the hospital? You had church. Because where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. That's what happens. We're going to church all the time. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I am the church. I'm on the platform all the time. I'm behind the pulpit all the time. That's who I am. Because without him, without him, I prayed this the other day. I said, Lord, don't ever let me know where I would be if it hadn't have been for you. I don't want to know. I don't, I don't want to know. We had good church. I'm bringing it home. We hear good preaching. We have a tremendous praise team. But if you want to know who you are and you want to know what you're supposed to be doing based upon this Bible study, where are you going to find it? I, I, I said this, I say it all the time, but I, I ain't saying it anymore because only like five people raise their hand and it hurts my feelings. <laughs> and I put a whole bunch of breads out there. I got some more on my desk. But I'm going to tell you what. The bread is cattywampus this year. Okay. So, oh, I, I do too. Love it. And the reason why I love it, Sister Tina, is every. It's just exactly what I need to hear. Every day, this word is in my life. This word is in my circumstances. This word is in my enemies. This word is in my victories. This word is in every. I'm telling you, these songs we've been reading, I don't even know how they got that order together, but it's perfect. Perfect. If you want to know who you are, if you want to know what you're supposed to be doing, You've got to be in the Word. It's the only way. Your feelings and your emotions will let you down. People will let you down. But the Word. You say, I don't really know how to read the Word. Let me teach you real fast. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. See, what, what's that got to do with anything? Oh, it's got everything to do with everything. Because along with the mountains and the seas and the rivers and the streams, God made me. And he didn't make me to be defeated. He made me to be victorious. And Brother David, he went to Calvary to ensure that. Because he said, ye shall receive after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. I don't know where in the world we got off start preaching. You got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost. And I believe you do. But I think we need to change it till you get to have the Holy Ghost. It's available for you. The power of the Holy Ghost. This victorious gospel is yours. And you might have messed up, Brenton, and you might have goofed up, and you might have had struggles, but I want you to look where you are right now. You're still here. You're still here. All of us, 
Ain't none of us here by our own merit. Uh, nobody's here that the Lord said, you finally been good long enough, uh, and I'll go ahead and bless you. But we come on crutches, and we come with our arms in a sling, and we come with black eyes uh, and bloody noses uh, and fat lips, uh, and we come beat up by life and beat up by the world and beat up by the devil and beat up by ourselves. But Brother Arnold's Tau says it. I'm still here. I'm still here. And if you're here, I don't care if you're hanging on by a thread. I don't care if you're barely sticking it in. I don't care if you've had conversations this week about hanging it up. If you're still here, there's still hope. I, I don't even know this song. I don't know all the words to it, but I sing it every now and again, just this part. Brother Magruder wrote it, if I'm not mistaken. If I am mistaken, we're just giving him credit for it anyway. But it says, I'm not super lucky. I'm in this by design. Salvation for my soul was God's idea. Not mine. So I guess I better get with his program. I better get in the word and I better not get out of the word till I know who I am. And I better not get out of the word until I got it down in my heart, Brother Terrence. Uh, and then when, that opens, when I open my mouth, uh, no longer is it doom and gloom and worry and despair. But when I open my mouth, I say, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I shall not want. Uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Uh, when I open my mouth, I declare, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. For when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, uh, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Uh, when I open my mouth, it's says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Stand with me right now in this place. You should have been there when I prayed through. The church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. And if you don't believe I've been redeemed, just follow me down to the Jordan stream. I stepped in the water and it was cold and it chilled my body but not my soul. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Ain't nothing like it in the whole world. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost and it's for you. It is for you. I don't care if you're hanging by the skin of your proverbial teeth. Uh, the power of God is ready to rise up in you uh, and make itself known uh, to your friends and to your enemies, to your family and to your neighbors. The power of the Holy Ghost is ready to go to work in you. We're about to go over to the other side. I'm inviting you, please come just for a moment out of respect to the graduates, just for a moment. If you didn't get them a card, give them a $20 bill. They won't give a rip. Yeah. Yeah, nobody give Brother Ronnie anything that belongs to Connor. But if you can't, even if you can't give them anything, your presence matters. Because we're going to pray for them when we get over there. We should have done it out here earlier, but I just got sidetracked. But uh, let me tell you something. I love Jesus. Not only do I love him, he loves me. And I need him to breathe. I need him to open my eyes. I need him for everything. And nothing without him. Let's pray over the food. Lord, bless everything we're about to do over here. I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for our guests. I thank you for your spirit that we feel in this place. I pray, God, that this word doesn't soon fall onto the stony ground or the the thorny ground or to the wayside, but it falls on good ground. I pray, God, that there's someone in here right now that they can't wait to get home and go to bed, but I pray, Lord, that when they lay their head down on the pillow that these words resonate. The only answer is you're going to find is in the word of God. Lord, I want to be led by the spirit and not the flesh, by faith and not by sight, by the word of God, not the words of my flesh or the enemy. Let it be alive in us. Bless this food we're about to eat and the drink and the fellowship and Bless everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go over to the other side.